One, two, one, two. You know how we do. It's your boy BQ. This is the Impact Lounge YouTube channel. And this is a special edition of the B-Side Podcast, the number one podcast for the Impact Wrestling fan. And I say it's a special edition because I'm having to record this one on my phone because my computer finally took its proverbial dump. And, uh, you know, after months of technical difficulties, I've got a new one coming in and things are going to start moving a lot smoother. And I'm really excited because I have some great content ideas for the YouTube channel that I really wasn't able to do before. So I'm really excited about that. So we should see a lot of growth and everything like that going forward. If it's your first time here, consider becoming a valued subscriber. We had a big month of June, over 500 new subscribers, over 64,000 views. So when I say this is the number one place to be for the Impact Wrestling fan, that is not lip service, folks. We are going to get into ranking the knockouts today. I'm not going to be ranking them 1 through 15. I have four different categories of superstar, all-star, average, and below average. Now, it took me a while to come up with these because I wanted to come up with a system that wasn't going to be too degrading to the bottom tier of the knockouts division uh, because I'm you know, pretty much fans of most of the girls. So I wanted to be um, careful with how I worded this. I'll probably come up with four better categories when I'm done with the podcast, but this should be fun for you guys. I think you'll enjoy this, and if you enjoy it, uh, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, and if you have any other future ideas for ranking systems or uh, what you would like to see me rank on the B-Side podcast, I will definitely do that. I will take it into consideration, and we will have a lot of fun with it. So um, before we get into the ranking system, I want to... You know, further explain here that I don't care what the, uh, you know, what these women can do in the ring. I don't care what they did in another company. You know, I am basing this ranking system of how they are currently being presented in Impact Wrestling and how their career has gone in Impact. So I don't care what they might do in the future. I mean, that will take, uh, I should rephrase that. I do care about the future a little bit. But I'm trying not to look into it too much. And in their past, I, you know, depending on what they did in Impact, I'm cool with that. But I don't care if they were in another company and they won this and this title or they did this and this around the world or their, you know, their work rate is this and this. I don't care. We're just going to be talking about Impact Wrestling and how they were being presented. So we're going to get into ranking the knockouts real quick, though. Let's pay some bills. Hey guys, if you're looking for a way to make some extra cash, especially during these hard times, the most enjoyable and easiest way to do it is by doing food delivery. Now there's two companies that I advocate, but the one that I'm talking about this week is DoorDash, taken from someone who's been there and done that because I love having multiple streams of income. Depending on tips and peak hours, you can expect to make about $16 to $20 an hour, sometimes even a little bit more. So if this sounds like it's right up your alley, Click the link in the description to get started. All right, folks, let's do this. Uh, I've got the knockouts here in no particular order. And again, this is on my phone, so we're doing things uh, a little bit differently. So I'm sorry if it's a little hard to follow. Uh, When I do this from my computer later, it'll be a lot easier to follow. So these knockouts are in no particular order. Just kind of threw them in here. And we're going to see... How balanced this knockouts division is. We talk about it. A lot of us fans that it's the best knockouts division. Let, let's see. Let's start with Alicia Edwards. Whoops. I've said on uh, many occasions, many occasions that she's actually my favorite knockout. Uh, she's the one I really want them to see. I really want to see them do something with. Now if we're talking about her presentation in Impact Wrestling. Um, she didn't win a single match on television last year, and I don't think she's won a match, uh, since beating Rebel at, uh, I think it was a Twitch show. So, um, my biggest concern and biggest criticism of the presentation of Alicia Edwards is that Impact has been clueless when it comes to presenting her in a way that she's not just Eddie Edwards' wife. They've only ever been able to put her in storylines and book her as Eddie Edwards' wife. She has to branch out on her own if they're going to do anything with her. So for that reason, she's pretty much, you know, been an enhancement talent and impact. So she's going to fall in the below average category. Tennille Dashwood. Ooh, I did this upload about Tennille Dashwood when she was signed that I thought she was the, uh, 
just this major signing. I was excited about it. I thought it was a new, you know, the face of the knockouts division. I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't say anything better about it. And, um, two months later, maybe even a month later, I was begging for them to turn her heel. I said, pull the plug. Uh, everything was really uneventful. The matches weren't good. And she was given an immediate title match at Bound for Glory that no one really wanted to see, but they felt she was a marquee name and they had to put her in that match. And ever since then, she has provided just about nothing to the knockouts division. Uh, I think she's only had a couple matches since Bound for Glory. They did this video package for her and I thought they were going to, you know, kind of repackage her a little bit. I said it should have been based off her uh, Instagram character. Because, you know, as an Instagram model, I mean, she's, her page blows up, you know, and then she kind of is presented in wrestling almost as like a goofier character, not that sexy, uh, you know, individual we see on Instagram. So, um, so she's been a real huge disappointment, but, uh, you know, she was, she added a lot of momentum to the knockouts division when she was signed, you know, because she was uh, a big name. So, um you know, in NXT, she was awesome, but here she just hasn't been. So I don't care about what she did there. I just know in Impact, she's been very, very average. Rosemary. Oh, we're getting into Rosemary early. Okay. What can what can we say about Rosemary? What can't we say about her? Rosemary's awesome. We all love Rosemary. It's uh, most for the most part, everyone's, you know, hot or cold on right now on the way she, they're repackaging her a little bit. And I used to... I used to hate it <laughs> when they were showing over the last couple of months these, you know, segments with her. I, I really, really disliked them. I didn't enjoy them even a little bit. But when she came out with Ty and Johnny Bravo a couple of weeks ago prior to her match with Jordan Grace, I just kind of got it. Like, it all kind of clicked for me. And now I'm actually kind of interested to see where it goes. But she needed something new. And again, people are really hot and cold on this, but I'm I'm actually more optimistic now than I was pri previously. But this is Rosemary we're talking about. She's only had one knockouts title reign, which is insane. But she's one of the most overstars in the company, if not the most overstar. So she's definitely a superstar for the knockouts division. And it really doesn't matter what they do with her or what they don't do with her. She's always going to be right there at the top. Nevea. Nevea's looked pretty good so far in Impact. Um, I don't think she's lost any matches or maybe she lost her last one. I don't, yeah, she did lose her, lose her last one. I'm sorry by a roll up. Um, I like the way that, you know, despite her being a relative unknown, unless you really know women's wrestling, you know, they, they brought her on, kind of presented her like a big deal. They teased the debut for a little bit. Was she going to attack Havoc? Was she going to join Havoc? Thank God they have her join Havoc and not try to reinvent the wheel. She's looked good so far, and um, I don't know how much television experience she has, but I thought she's, I've been thinking she's been looking really, really comfortable, um, but I'm not ready to put her in a, you know, overvalue her quite yet. Um, I'm going to throw her in the average category, but there's a lot of potential for her to, to really move up this list. Taya Valkyrie, Taya Valkyrie. You guys remember when Ty Valkyrie debuted in Impact? Um, she had a few matches. The matches weren't good. The the uh, gimmick was a little confusing. It was you know the entrance was kind of dark. The music was dark, and then she had the bright colors. And it was it was a, a we didn't really know what to expect of it, and we didn't know how how long she'd be around. You know, fast forward to now. She's in tremendous shape. She's one of the most enjoyable knockouts to watch in ring and with the segments. She is so comfortable in who she is right now. She is a major player. She's the longest reigning knockouts champion. And I didn't even think she was going to stick around after dropping the title. Because when you wrestle for a smaller company, sometimes, you know, when you reach the top of the mountain and, and have for that long, at that point, what could you do? So I really expected her to be gone. And she is... You know, she continues to kind of reinvent herself and she doesn't even need the title to be effective right now. I was concerned that she needed the title. She clearly doesn't. And she has clearly 
a superstar for Impact Wrestling. Kimberly. Kimberly is another one um, who looks really, really, and she obviously was in the NXT system, but looks really, really comfortable on camera. And I really like her entrance and her music. And she started off hot the way they debuted her on Madison Rain segment, and then she got a couple wins against Jessica Havoc. So she started off hot. She's uh, kind of cooled off since. And she's not, you know, much like Nevaeh, she's still not signed to the Knockouts division, but she's a part of Slammiversary. So, you know, I'm optimistic that it'll happen, especially with her husband in Impact. But she's looked really good, really comfortable. I've been really impressed. And um, I'm going to throw her in the average category because she, you know, she started off hotter when she uh, joined the company. You know, at first, um, sorry about that, guys. At first, you know, I she, she started off looking like she was going to be a big deal in the division, division. It's cooled off, and it's probably because she's not, you know, signed. So had she not started off with that momentum, I probably would have thrown her in the below average just based on the last couple of weeks. But uh, she she has a potential to be a big player, too. She's looking really good. Deanna Perrazzo. I had uh, gone on record in saying I was pretty sure she was going to go to AEW because I felt... She was the, the perfect bridge from what they have right now to what they want to be. You know, I really thought she was the one for them. And her, Britt Baker's her best friend. So I just, I really was not optimistic she was going to come to Impact. And she is. And she's uh, looked like a really big deal so far. And um, this, this was a major signing for them. She is immediately in a Knockouts title picture, which is not something I'm really big on with debuting but impact seems to do that they can't help but to do that and you know because she was this is a really hard one for me but between superstar and all-star just because you know just because she comes from the NXT system and everything um, I, I don't want to just you know overvalue her but they needed a signing like this. They needed someone to choose Impact. I've been saying that for a little while. And she's right there in the main event picture. And she's going to be. And I think she's going to be the Knockouts champion. I really do. Um, her YouTube numbers are just off the charts. And uh, she, she's a big signing. So um, I was really close to All-Star. But I'm actually throwing her in Superstar. Because I think she's one of the next faces of the Knockouts division. So... I said I didn't want to look too much in the future with this, but in, in her case, I, I have to a little bit because um, I just think she's going to be a major player. Katie Forbes. Katie Forbes is another one that I like. Uh, she can do more in the ring than she's being cr given credit for. She's only had two matches in Impact. She pretty much is out there with RVD, uh, with Cancel Culture, and you know hasn't had the big role that I was hoping she was going to have. But she's capable of more than Impact. It's allowing her to show right now. But um, I have really have no choice but to throw her in the below average category. Because it's just of the way she is being presented. Again, these categories have nothing to do with my opinion on the on the women. Or, you know, what they can do. What they, you know, what they're capable of. It's just the way they're being presented right now. And I actually like Katie Forbes a lot. But I have to put her in that category because they're just not giving her an opportunity. I mean, they didn't even throw her in the number one contender for the gauntlet. Uh, for the knockout championship and the number one contender's gauntlet. Susie. Uh, I love the Susie character. I don't know about you guys. I've, I've mentioned before that, you know, my girlfriend watches wrestling with me very, very little. But... When she watches, when Susie comes on, she's like all eyes, all eyes on TV. She really enjoys Susie. And I'm, I got to give Impact Wrestling props for repackaging the Sue Young character and giving it an extra shelf life. I think it was absolutely genius. But this app, this, this Susie character, uh, you know, I would throw her an average because creatively I like what they're doing with her, but she doesn't win. She almost gets no offense in the ring. And it's hard to see any real momentum with her as a knockout. So she's going to be in the 
below average category. Kiera Hogan. Kiera Hogan, in my opinion, has been their best uh, homegrown talent in quite some time. As far as look at the way she debuted, I didn't think she'd be in the company past a few sets of tapings. Um, just because I just, I wasn't optimistic because they were signing a lot of knockouts prior to that, that, you know, uh, I, I often bring up Ava Story, MJ Jenkins, who just did nothing, you know, and I thought she was going to be the next one in that category. I thought her promos were a little rough and then they turned her heel and she's been amazing and she's, um, she's a future knockouts champion, but she, she is what Impact Wrestling needs, a homegrown star who just grows with the company and just gets better and better and i've got her as an all-star jessica havoc uh i didn't catch the spoiler before she returned so when she did return i definitely popped in my living room i thought it was uh, really cool to see her return she for the most part wins most most of her matches i'm really shocked that she hasn't had a real legitimate shot at the knockouts title yet um, I guess she had a couple against Taya and then the Slammiversary match, but I just never felt like she was a major contender. But she's beat Rosemary several times. She's been very dominant, and what she's doing with Nevaeh is, has a lot of uh, potential. And I think it, Nevaeh was able to breathe a lot of life into Havoc, but you know, Havoc has also always presented really well as a monster. And I think she'll get another knockout title run. It's possible but definitely throw her into the all-star category for the knockout. So we're saying we're pretty pretty balanced so far. Tasha Steeles. So Tasha Steeles in NWA was a baby face, if you can believe that. And she was she teamed up with uh, Allison Kay and Ashley Vox, and it's a real makeshift type of team. And, you know, she never, she never came off as a star at all. Uh, actually, as a matter of fact, when Impact kind of announced that she, they are bringing her on board, it was like, she's okay, I guess. But the, the, the potential that she has with Kira Hogan and the chemistry is amazing. It is off the charts. And already Impact has presented her in a much better light than NWA ever did. And I love NWA, folks. But they have done an excellent, excellent job. Uh, she's wrestled a couple matches. And she's looked really good. This one is a little hard for me to, to rank as well. You know, it's, it's, it's like I kind of want to put her in that all-star star category. But she's still really new with the company. And has not really established herself in the knockouts division quite yet. Even though the chemistry they have is just off the charts. She's borderline. But I, I am going to put her in the... Uh, the average category. Keep trying to put these in order of uh, the way I discuss them. The order I discuss them in, but they keep moving around. All right, Madison Rain. I got to give props to Madison Rain on commentary. She did commentary years ago with Josh and the Pope, and she was horrible. And she is she is the commentary team right now. She's funny. She's natural. She's quick witted. Uh, she's sharp. And her segment is really good. The, the backstage, the locker room talk. I really like the locker room leader gimmick. That breathed a, a lot of life back into her. But the locker room talk is cool. I don't enjoy Johnny Swinger's part in that. But, you know, I'm enjoying her. I'm enjoying the confidence of her character on screen right now. And uh, she's saving that commentary team. Because Josh Matthews is doing some of his, probably his wor worst work. Um, of, of his impact career right now um, pretty I mean he has been for a while and I'm even though I'm a Josh fan I, I just got to be real with you guys he's just not sounding good right now um, Madison Rain's really saving that commentary team I'm hoping she gets another title run uh, with the locker room leader gimmick I really really hope she does but she's definitely an all-star um, you know what? I'm even going to move her up to a superstar. She's held that title way too many times for me to downgrade her. All right, Kylie Ray. So Kylie Ray, very similar to Deanna Perrazzo. She chose Impact Wrestling. She had a lot of buzz behind her for leaving AEW. And people wanted to know where she was going to go. And a lot of people were upset that she went to Impact. 
Um, I, I, this was wonderful. She showed up at Bound for Glory, and I'm telling you, as someone at Bound for Glory, that pop was massive. The biggest pop of the night for anything. And she looked really good in there. She's amazing in the ring. Like, she's, you know, as big of a fan as I am of Allie, and their characters are similar, she is just much better than Allie in the ring. And much better than most of these knockouts, in all honesty. Um, I'm throwing her in the all-star category. I'm not putting her, even though she's on the same playing field kind of as Deanna Perrazzo, as far as just momentum and buzz coming into the company and them choosing the company. Deanna Perrazzo's a... She's, I really feel she's going to be the knockouts champion at Slammiversary. I don't see Kylie Ray in the knockouts uh, championship picture anytime soon. She doesn't really need to be. But she was an all-star signing. Let's take Sue Young. So obviously she reappear, appears on this list twice as Susie and Sue Young. I thought she should have had a longer knockouts title reign than she did. And... I, you know, as I said, I give props to Impact for, for getting a lot of shelf life out of her character. Uh, she's just, she's amazing. And I enjoy everything that she does. Again, I thought she should have been Knockout Champion longer. I thought she should have had a really nice long reign. And I, she doesn't show much these days. But uh, when she does, it's, it's a big deal. And she's a big player in the division. For me, she is an all-star. Really, really balanced. It would be perfectly balanced if Jordan Grace was going to go in the below average category, but she's not. She is the knockouts champion. And I don't think she's been the most entertaining champion. It's, it's you know, difficult sometimes to book Babyface as a champion and give him a real memorable run. They, you know, they had something going where Madison Rain was trying to feed her, you know, uh, competition and that didn't last very long and I think that would have been good for Madison and not for Madison but for Jordan um, but but she's been a good champion she's she's uh, just not the most entertaining champion in the world but she's she's done really good work since joining impact I mean I can't really complain about anything she does in the ring and um, just the fact alone that she is the the knockouts champion I've got to put her in the superstar category since she is currently holding the title. Um, but otherwise, she would have kind of been an all-star if she hadn't been the champion. So you can see we're actually pretty well balanced here. This is a pretty strong division. I mean, you can't have the ones at the top if you don't have the ones at the bottom. That's just the way it is, or you know, or even the average category. Like, you just... Everyone can't be on the same playing field. Otherwise, no one, no one gets over. Nobody gets momentum. So... I hope you guys enjoyed this. This was something a little bit different, and I'm going to do more of these in the B-Side podcast in the future. I just need ideas from you guys, and we will do it. We will make it happen. So, again, uh, thanks for being here. I'll talk to you soon. Peace.